Welcome everybody. We are live in today coffee break session. My name is Martina Szczybiorek and it's a pleasure to uh, chat with you today. Of course, since it's a coffee break session, traditionally I have my cup of coffee and I am really looking forward to hear where are you from. So please, if you're seeing this and you want to say hello, please say hello in the comments for the Facebook. Unfortunately, at the moment we do lives only on Facebook. However, soon it's going to come to YouTube and LinkedIn. So let's dive in today's session. Today's session is devoted into rare skills for scientists. And um, as you can imagine, probably, if you're becoming a scientist, you're gaining a lot of skills. And here I want to talk about skills that are not necessarily teachable, which means that it only uh, relies on your personality. And personality develops throughout your childhood, adolescence, but also during your adult life, you can change slightly your personality. So let's talk about that. Uh, I came across personally uh, with a strong belief that when it comes to uh, personality type, standard personality types for scientists, it's going to be uh, more um, brainiac, uh, kind of some people see it as the Sheldon from uh, Big Bang Theory, which I personally never watched, but I can imagine what's the stereotype. But let's now imagine that you're not necessarily um, slightly awkward, Sheldon. Um, you are actually outspoken and you love to communicate with people, to uh, chat with them um, about many things. And where do you fit as a scientist with such personality um, when it comes to different uh, jobs for scientists? So let's start with our career map that I have here hand uh, next to me. And I would say sales. Not everyone wants to talk about sales. Uh, sales representatives are the people who we see the most often during our um, education. So uh, if we uh, think about sales, sales marketing, and we dive into that. Um, I'm going to share our um, our career map with you guys. And uh, remember, this career map is available on our website, and uh, you can um, download it for yourself. So, which job should I pursue? And we think about sales, sales, and marketing. Now, not everyone in that field will be the person, the contact person that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we were super grateful every single time we got a free calendar from certain companies and we got a chance to chat with people. Those are obviously amazing personalities and you have to have certain outspoken personality to be able to do this type of job. But zooming closer to marketing and sales, there are more positions that you can apply for. You have application scientists, which means that you will know the application of the certain product by heart. You're going to know where people can use it, but you also will be able to discuss with the scientists the science behind that product. And you're going to have to be tip top shape with that knowledge and also you might have this discussion to ease the uh, use of that product in different types of research for the scientists you're working with. And remember, sales is about relationships. Here I'm going to greet Vikas van der Merwe from WhiteSci. Uh, he is an amazing salesperson, has amazing personality. And he always talks about the fact that sales, it's not about selling the product, but it's about establishing relationship with the scientists. And I absolutely applaud to that. Um, you can be a product manager where you're going to uh, manage the production line uh, from the sales and marketing perspective. You can be market research analysis. So you're going to be researching 
uh, other companies, what they do, what they specialize in, what is their product, uh, where it works, where it has been used. So you're gonna have to know all of that by heart as well. And because you are a scientist, uh, that means that you're great in research. So uh, using tools such as as simple as Googling things, looking for internet, uh, going to conferences, you're gonna have a bit of like marketing investigation kind of ongoing. And that's what you can do. You can be the technical sales specialist, which means that you're gonna know every bits and bobs about the product and know where it's used, all the technical difficulties behind that product. And you're gonna sort it out with your scientists, people that you're gonna work with. And then marketing communication specialist. What does it mean? It's not so people's heavy. I would like to refer you to um, the interview I've done with Julian Nunes Goncalves, who is assisting us here in Science Bridge, but he also works for um, companies where he is the marketing manager. And he basically focuses on this um, type of position where he is not salesperson. So he it's not sales heavy, um conversation it's more that you have to show off the product but you are not going directly to people to sell the product to and then we have the capital equipment specialist uh, where again that's going to be more uh, related to in-house marketing and uh, in-house sales and establishing the prices so when we cover the sales and marketing as the umbrella term, remember that those are just suggested um, keywords that you should look for if you want to work in this particular field of science, uh, in this particular field of industry. So when it comes to job search, you would go uh, to, let's say, LinkedIn and you would look for those positions. But remember that companies might have their own jargon, their own terms for this type of positions. So it is crucial to do informational interviews with the company representatives before even uh, you're going to apply for this job or think about this job. You can look at people on LinkedIn and uh, try to establish the connection with them and do proper networking, which we're gonna discuss soon in the sessions. And then only you apply for the job. That's how you should actually look for your jobs so that you know what you're applying. You're not buying a cat in a bag. You actually know what will be the position, what you're gonna be doing uh, in that particular position. But then um, thinking about sales and marketing, I would like to focus on positions that are not mentioned here, but are related uh, very heavily to marketing communication specialists. People in such positions um, have to also have other skills aside from understanding the science and being able to translate the science to the lay audience. Sometimes you can find uh, places like agencies and scientific agencies which specialize in marketing of certain products. And those agencies are not so heavily populated here in South Africa, but because of the globalization and because of living in pandemics world, we these days are able to actually um, reach out overseas. And if you would want to live in South Africa, but still work for agency that um, is established overseas, it's not a problem these days. And that's the beauty of living in this type of world because uh, communication uh, specialists, marketing communication specialists can be um, only uh, working online, uh, only from home. And that's amazing because then you don't have to move to other country. But you can still work for a foreign company. So uh, what I mean by those agencies uh, is that they would hire you to, uh, for instance, create advertisements, certain uh, type of uh, positioning of their drug of choice or their product. Um, and to do so, you would have to work with the creative team. But it doesn't mean that you cannot be the creative person. So if you were gifted with creative thinking and let's say, you uh, have skills or you can develop skills with uh, different 
types of softwares to create advertising or create graphics, infographics. It is really recommended for you to look for this type of jobs and this type of positions uh, and this type of companies because you will find yourself uh, in a very different type of field than just science. You're going to work with creative people. You're going to have to know how to visually, for instance, advertise something. And um, my favorite thing about science is that uh, it's invisible. So you know uh, from your books that obviously books was creating certain types of graphics for you to understand the receptors, the proteins, uh, the binding better. So uh, now you're entering the field where actually this can be used and your imagination can be used to actually sell the product or explain the product to someone or to lay audience or to the doctors. So uh, if you are a very creative person, you might want to think about this type of jobs where you can use your creative side. And when we are talking about the creative side, I would like to go now to different type of field where we have the medical writers um, and medical specialists. Uh, so uh, going out from our, um, our mind map, uh, we have also types of jobs where your writing can be very creative. And for instance, uh, it is when you're writing science, when you're describing your results, there is certain jargon that you have to use and you're not allowed to go out of these certain frames of writing and using type of wording. Uh, and it can happen that it's completely not your um, field and you are more creative when it comes to writing, but you absolutely hate the scientific writing. And that's also okay because uh, that skill uh, can be also used for finding the medical writer specialist and in different types of fields, in different types of, uh, sorry, uh, careers, you might want to use that. So for instance, you want to write for um, an agency, ad agency to advertise um, the products. You might want to write for blogs and that can also be paid a job where you're writing for blogs and um, you are uh, describing certain medication or certain therapies, but uh, for lay audience. So your scientific knowledge here is absolutely crucial and it has to be on point. However, because you're writing for the lay audience, they have to be, they have to understand what you are talking about which means that the words that you are going to be using have to be the lay words. And this is the tricky bit because with that comes a huge responsibility as a scientist because um, while changing the scientifically accurate words to lay words, you might change the meaning of um, the science behind it. And it's your responsibility to actually avoid that. So you will have to have a very strict check on science that you are um, explaining behind the words that you're using, the lay words. And um, this is uh, beautifully seen here in pandemics where we are living because a lot of people these days will have plenty of questions to you as a scientist. Uh, let's start from uh, some parents or grandmothers here studying science and they want to understand what is uh, COVID-19, uh, what is the difference between uh, the virus and virus-induced disease, what is the, the vaccination, what is the difference between a uh, live attenuated vaccine versus protein vaccine, protein-based vaccine, mRNA vaccine. So if you understand that and you understand science and you know how to explain it in easy words, maybe that's also the career for you to look at. So medical writer, but in not in regulatory fields, but in fields of um, more towards the blogs, uh, towards news. This is something that also here you can use your creativity. And lastly, here I'll say when you're writing, you can become a science fiction writer. 
And I know it might be completely out there and you're like, Martina, what are you talking about? Why are you recommending me to become a science fiction writer? And you would be surprised that quite a few people decided to follow that career and because they have such an amazing knowledge in science, their books are actually getting a lot of attention because they explain science, they hypothesize about the science, and because of that, the books kind of have this amazing feel of it actually could be true. And that's where I want to finish here uh, our chat about um, alternative skills for scientists that are not necessarily related to science that you're getting at the university, but are related to your personality. Uh, I hope that uh, that was of value for you and I'll see you on the next coffee session. Have a great day.